Hello and welcome to Dasmore Wargaming. Um, yeah, you've joined us today with super special guest, uh, Mr. Duncan Rhodes. Hi, Duncan. How are you? Hi, I'm very good, thank you. I'm very good. Um, just had a, a nice day trying to do some admin work. Oh. Uh, of which there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that admin. Um, yeah. yeah, so um, as always, I'm joined by Ash or T Lord of Chaos. Hi, Ash. Good evening, everybody. And uh, Lewis. Hi, Lewis. How hello. Are you? Yeah, you're all right. I'm all right. I'm very well. How are good, you? Good. Yeah, not too bad. And uh, hello to everyone in the Twitch chat. So hello, Chaos Got Trek 2, um, uh, who's just said hello as well. Uh, so else we've got? Oh, we've got a few. Nevermore ne and Too Many Minis. <laughs> too Many Minis. Yeah, come on. Seriously. <laughs> Can there be such a thing? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, no, thank you very much, Dunk, for uh, giving up some of your time once again for the channel. It means a lot. Um, you are very welcome. It's always nice to have a chat yes. and uh, interact <laughs> with the outside world. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I will, what we will ask as well, because uh, you know we are, you know, as, as three of us, I'm not saying Duncan is, but we, we are useless. So let us know um, if the sound is all okay. We think it is. We've had some mic troubles and things like that, but just let us know in the comments. Also, um, I think if Duncan's all right with it, if anyone's got any questions or anything like that, Put them in the comments and uh, we'll try and get to them. But we've had a few people ask some questions on an Instagram post as well that I've put out. So, um, yeah, so we'll just go through that and uh, hopefully have a nice chat about hobby, if that's OK. Yeah, that sounds great. I like to be an open book with this kind of stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's always interesting to see what people want to notice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I guess um, a, good, a good one to start off, and I think it's one that you've probably been asked many times before. But it's how long have you been in the hobby uh, and what made you want to start the hobby? Uh, so I got into it when I was 11 uh, mm -hmm. for wargaming anyway. I was into making model airplanes and stuff before that. And mm -hmm. I'm not really sure how young I was when I started, so like seven or something, you know, FX airplanes. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm 36 now, <laughs> so uh, I don't feel it. <laughs> well, I, f I feel younger, but my knees feel older. So right. I'm in the middle, I'm kind of balancing. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's been, whew, how long is that? What, 25 years, I suppose? Mm. Good Lord. Uh, yeah, so since I first got into it um, when I was 11, I've just always been engaged in some way or another, yeah. um, even going through all my you know, schooling and everything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then somehow it's become a career, so I've had no way out since then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, uh, what, what was, was there any particular thing that happened that made you want to do this as a, a career did it sort of jump out at you that yes i want to do that or did it just happen by chance sort of um, well, it was definitely by chance yeah just um i don't think many people really know what they want to do mm. you know as they're growing up um you just kind of get sort of funneled through from one lesson to the next right you know the exams are important and stuff and then yeah. i think a lot of people get to that point and then suddenly have to apply to university and there's a lot of pressure to do that and it's like all right what career are you going to do I, I don't know um, yeah I mean, I, I went to, uh, I, well, I, I got a placement for doing archaeology in wow. University of Winchester, I think it was, because uh, I was interested in like, ancient stuff, you know, ancient Rome and things like that. So I was always more practical as well rather than theoretical. So I wanted to be out doing something in a hole and being rained on, I suppose, uh, <laughs> digging up <laughs> stuff in the mud. Um, but no, I, ne I never even considered any sort of gaming thing as a career. Right. Um, and so it, it just sort of happened. I basically was after a summer job and I got one in Games Workshop and it just, one thing has just sort of led to another. Yeah. Uh, I don't think my parents were too impressed by it when it started. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and like, I remember dad saying, when are you going to get a real job? You know, when I used to yeah. work. And I don't think they ever really believed it as a proper job until, um, well, when I was in the studio anyway, until something of mine appeared in White Dwarf. And my dad, because he used to work in the railway, mm. um, you know, you got old like WH Smiths and stuff in railway stations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, uh, he was there with a colleague and he was in one of these WH Smiths and he saw White Dwarf and he opened it up and I was in it with some article of me painting an army. And uh, I think that's when he started like going, actually, he's doing something with this. Mm. Uh, it was all chance and blundering through. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't think anyone really knows what they want to do. I mean, I don't know if you guys ever did. Do you have, any of you have a direct idea? I still, idea don't, I still when... don't. You still don't? Uh, yeah, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. So. <laughs> well, I ended up studying politics and international relations and ended up in IT. So. <laughs> there you go. Do you know, I, I know 
really few people who actually do for a career what they did in university. Like, yeah. oh, I knew, yeah. I know um, one of the photographers at Games Workshop, he studied photography and he's an amazing photographer, like stunning. He did a picture of um, uh, when, when Nagash came out during the end times, mm -hmm. he did a photograph of Nagash with all the skeletons and whatever. And it looked like one of the artwork pieces, the way he'd arranged all the photographs. And it, it took him a long time to do it, but it was a stunning photograph. Yeah. Um, also, Roger. So, for those who aren't aware, Roger's basically the guy who um, runs all the cameras in our painting videos yeah. and edits all the footage together. And the two of us are kind of like sort of running around spinning plates around the various other bits of the business. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he studied um, film in university, you know, studied cinematography and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he'd go around, he was in South Africa, so he'd do like little documentaries and things in South Africa. And he's got some quite crazy stories about things that he's, you know, been around filming and things. Um, but then he, he moved to the UK and he was just working in Games Workshop's factory for a, hmm. quite a long time. You know, then he got into the um, uh, the office where, uh, what do they call it, central operations, where, you know, they're working out what stock to send out and stuff. And mm -hmm. um, when the TV studio started up, um, he was like, oh, I remember that. I used to really love that. Mm -hmm. And so he went for it. He got the job and then had to try and educate himself on how much everything had changed over like 10 years, which, you know, as you know, in the computer world, it's a lot. So, um, yeah, they're... Off the top of my head, they're the only two people I can think of that do for a living what they did at university. <laughs> wow. So, wow. But any of you folks out there are going through this process and don't know what you want to do, you're not alone. No one does. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to say as well, um, oh, hi, Nevermore, who's just chipped in there. Um, yeah, uh, Ash and Lewis, if you've got any like uh, any questions or anything, then do like jump in and things like that. And uh, yeah, do it. Whatever you want to do. Uh, well, I think we've got uh, a few. Why don't Why don't we go to the chat straight away? Because there's, yeah, 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 uh, there's no a way. couple here. Uh, so, uh, so Chaos Cartwright, Duncan, what has been your least favorite and most enjoyed model to paint? Not just Warhammer. Oh, um, hmm. that's a good question. So I could say um, it's a very difficult thing to pick something out for that because there's so many. And with the weird job I have I end up painting so many miniatures and so many yeah. different things so you know it depends on my moods uh, <laughs> um, a thing that stands out always when someone asks about this is um, you guys are aware of the Elder Scrolls Call to Arms oh so, yes yeah yeah uh, Medifius um, so for those not aware it's basically Skyrim war game um, skirmish game so a bit like Warcry um, and in that there is a model of the dragon now they've not yet brought out the rules for it but it's the uh, Mermineer? It's the one that, for those of you who have Mermin played it... Yeah, Mermineer. Yeah, it's the, it's the one that you fight at the, ta the tower outside Whiterun, isn't it? That's and, it, uh, yeah. That's First the dragon beautiful. you've come across. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and you feel awesome. And you're like, yes, I killed a dragon. And then you end up, like, like, no, like two hours later, it's like, oh, another one. <laughs> you get fed up of it. <laughs> <Yeah. pain. laughs> um, but uh, that model is, a, is brilliant. Um, that's one that I really, really enjoyed doing. Um, that was a lot of fun to work on. Yeah. And it was also a nice experience around painting the miniature too because Modifia sent it to us mm -hmm. um, before it came out. And it was payment for us doing a video that they kind of commissioned us to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so oh, like, awesome. how, much, how much do you want to charge? And we went, can we have the dragon early? We want to make a video of it. And they were like, sure, there you go. <laughs> 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 that's awesome. Uh, so that's one that stands out. If you ever just want a really nice model to paint, I recommend that. It's worth every penny. It yeah. goes together like a dream. It's really nicely. It's not too complicated. Nicely detailed. It's great. Um, other really nice models I've always enjoyed. I, I really liked painting the Warlord Titan. I did when we were still at Games Workshop. Um, the, the Titanicus one. Mm -hmm. um, those models are really nice. Yeah. Um, and there's elements of, and also bits I've really disliked whenever it's like a big model. Mm -hmm. um, so um, what's the... Um, well, Karazai Kara the Scarred, you know, mm -hmm. the Age of Sigma Frank. Yeah. So that was lovely to paint. And there comes a point where it's like, this is going nicely, this is looking great. Um, but before that, I do my planning and my testing and I sample little things to try out. And then it's like, okay, all that works in theory. That's what I'm going to do. That's how I paint it. Then we mm -hmm. come to doing it. And there's always part of me going, what if it doesn't work? Yeah. What are you going to do then, Rhodes? You know, back to the start, <laughs> do it all again. So, um, well, those models, it's always like a period of like, oh, God, and then, oh, thank God. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but for models I've disliked, there's not really many. Some are really awkward to paint. Mm. Um, like Fabius Bile was quite an awkward model to paint because he's very fiddly. Mm. Um, but there's never really been anything that I've hated doing. I don't yeah, think. yeah. Um, That's fair enough. That's fair yeah. enough. Um, so Void Millies has put a question it kind of links into something that I was going to talk about anyway so um, I'll do it now obviously the Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy been going a little while now 
Mm-hmm. Um, I say two oh, years. Yeah, yeah. Go, mm. Going going strong. Um, mm-hmm. Great content on there. <laughs> and following on from that, you've obviously got your own uh, paint range. Mm. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, so basically, um, it's when can we buy them? Uh, as soon <laughs> as the Kickstarter backers have got them. Um, right. So at the moment, so they're actually being manufactured. Well, being, at the moment, it's all being put together by Transatlantis mm. Games, who are a new company, but um, they're run by people who have been in the industry for a long time. Mm. Um, and you will have known them in one form or another from some other company. So, like, their CEO, for example, used to be the guy who was CEO of Games Workshop North America. So, you know, it's, it, they've got experience, they know what they're doing, they've got factories already, and actually a bit of an infrastructure going. So, mm-hmm. um, this means that once the Kickstarter have got their stuff, once they've the, right now they're doing like so many thousand bottles a day filling them all up and once right. that's all set out everyone's got their stuff everyone's happy that's when retail are going to start mm. getting their things so uh, anyone listening to this actually who's interested in stocking it you want to get in touch with transatlantis games which if you head to their website which is like it's just transatlantisgames.com mm. there's like an email link and if you email them they'll be in touch yeah. with you yeah. um, so all going well i would say april mm. But yes, I can't. Yeah, but it's not. Bear in mind, it's not me going no, filling. No, that's, I can't that's, that's fair enough. Exactly I, was, I was just gutted. I missed the Kickstarter. <laughs> it was just like bad timing with being able to afford it, and when it happened, it's just yeah, it happens. Yeah. But I will, <laughs> I will get them. Right, so um, I'll be desperate to try them out. So uh, well, yes. I hope you enjoy, when you do try them, I hope you enjoy using them. Um, oh, yeah, the really yeah. proud of them. It was uh, it was an awesome experience being able to work with because we, we were like going to the chemists who would literally put this together and. Um, it was really interesting because I'd be like, um, could you make this color behave a little bit more like this? And they'd be like, oh, yeah, what you need to do mm. is – I'd understand the words like in an individual context, but in that order, yeah. it makes sense. Um, and they'd be explaining how you've got to put all these different ingredients into paint because like you – like say for a water-based paint, for example, if you think of water beating on some glass, mm. you want to try and stop the paint from doing that. So you put in a chemical to stop that happening, yeah. which has the side effect of making it foam uploads. So then you've got to put something else in to stop that, which then also causes it to smell really bad. So you've got to put something else in. To, and it just like kind of one thing leads to yeah. another. So yeah. there's way more to it than you might think. So it was great to be able to experience them doing all this. And then, you know, say, uh, but I'd really like this paint to kind of like, do this sort of coverage thing can you do that and then they'd go off they'd try stuff they'd bring it back and then we'd try it again and so it, we were able to kind of sort of fine-tune it to be the how i would want paints to be yeah so um if there are colors i know already that i really like but there are little niggly things about it i don't like we could address that in these paints yeah that's what i was hoping to be honest because it, it did like when it came out on kickstarter and things like that i got the feeling it was more like a paint sort of created by painters for painters of minis yes. so you get a like a really the best product it can be mm-hmm. um so that's what i'm sort of hoping when i get my hands on it that that's how it, it feels <laughs> do you know what i mean like um, yeah yeah well i i i hope you like them um I mean, I, I hope to god everyone likes them because yeah. my name's on it <laughs> yeah yeah i'm sure i love the fact that they're in i love the fact that they're in triads I think that makes yeah our, well our life so much easier <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm glad you like well we'll we approached all of it to try and make it accessible because everything that um roger and i've been doing has all been about accessibility for people to give it a go mm. so we figured that if you just had a, like a sort of a shotgun you know blast of all these colors of all different sorts mm. and you use one of the like a red like how do you know what you can go to to, sh- to highlight it you know do you know if they exist yeah. in the range it can be a bit overwhelming so we try to make it clear that for each color there's like three so you know if you've got the light red there's darker ones you know mm. it's that's the idea yeah do you think you'll like expand on like the, the the merchandise type thing like if the paints do well you know and, and that, will you like maybe look at brushes and other things uh i don't know if i'm allowed to say oh, uh, okay <laughs> <laughs> um i i would say that this is really just the beginning um transatlantis definitely want to build on mm. the brand yeah so you'll see more stuff going forward okay that's fair enough that's fair enough awesome. touch the gray area there <laughs> <laughs> yeah exclusive <laughs> well let's get this one out of the way first of all yeah, but you yeah. know there's like this i don't know if you guys saw with a lot of the backer goals um yeah we had some miniatures based in there mm-hmm. and that's because we thought it'd be nice to have a range of miniatures that are just nice to paint yeah so just fun characters lots of expression in their faces that sort of thing lots of archetypes from different <clears throat> fantasy things you know mm-hmm. uh, and people really love those, especially Battle Bug. So we we're like, oh, wonder if we could do anything with that. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see. Um, I mean, 
I've got no idea how far it'll go, but then I never really thought I'd end up in the situation <laughs> yeah. I'm in now. So, um, yeah, the Nevermore has actually asked, do you plan on doing uh, painting videos for all of the Tooth and Coats minis? So he really wants to see one of Princess Sophia. Oh yes, um, well hopefully. Um, it's with when it comes to the painting videos, it's always an issue of it's basically highly competitive as to um, what we do because everyone wants to see Warhammer, right? So um, that's the most popular thing. So if we do something else, we've got to be able to justify that enough people want to see this thing and it's interesting and we think there's something cool in there to show you. Um, so we basically have to think like that. So for our own miniatures, it, it seems like it's a yeah an absolute certainty that we should do it, but we also want to make sure that people would want to see that content so mm. from what i'm getting from feedback people do so probably but yeah we'll see um but uh, we do have um color reference images of all the characters because for all of them when i get time i've been painting them so i've got in my uh, my little case here but i've got um baron von evil in here and i've got um mm -hmm. revner as well and uh, so i'm using the color references to paint the miniatures and so you'll see in time like a full painted set of them um so yeah, if I remember correctly, she's got a green dress and red hair. Mm. Now yeah. official images. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, shall I? Um, I might just see if this works now. I'm going to go over and just put on a like a, a slideshow thing. I've got some pictures of your the miniatures uh, that you've painted mm. uh, during you know the academy type thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I'm I don't know if you're watching this live as well, Duncan, or whether you can see what we're seeing. Yep, I've loaded it up now. Ah. The uh, the five oh first. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> so yes. Um, this is one that I found really really interesting because um, myself and Ash have just started a um, a video series which is uh, Daz and Ash Learn Legion. Mm -hmm. So we're Star Wars fans, but we have never really looked at Star Wars Legion um, in playing it and. I thought you know what we're just gonna start from the very beginning and just document it just like two idiots learn a new game system that's really cool so yeah. um that's that's it and you know just see how we get on with it and uh so i've been yeah. painting some of these up and this video was so invaluable on doing it quickly um, <laughs> so I, I copied it but awesome. i just i just changed the colors slightly the markings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh so i wanted to do red but there you go that's by the by um but yeah that's uh <laughs> <laughs> okay okay no, I, can, I can totally get down with that um i mean we we approached that video with that in mind that you can do the markings whatever color scheme yeah, you want yeah um it is actually how so i've got a bunch of clones it's not you know how it is you never finish a project right it's another thing i need to finish <laughs> yeah. um but i was doing the uh 91st recon for my ones which mm. um, i'm sure you, the star wars fans out there will know but this is the, the ones where um in episode three they're the ones who are on the jet bikes when they shoot down the jedi um, they've got like this circular symbol. It looks like the Tau symbol, actually, with a line in the middle and a circle. <laughs> but I, so I painted them, and then I took the method I used for that um, to do this video, and I just changed the colours to be 501st because we thought that'd be the most popular because everyone likes those ones. Yeah. But um, but yeah, that's re I'm really glad that you liked it. Yeah. And it's cool that you're documenting the progress of it because people are always interested yeah. to see yeah. someone going in new into a game. Yeah. But um, okay, this one is something that Lewis might know a little bit more about. I'm not sure. Mm. Um, oh, uh, no, I'll give it a go. Is no. it Fallout? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> that's a Fallout nice New one. Vegas model, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is um, the uh, so this is from Modiphius. This is Fallout Wasteland Warfare. This mm. is uh, the miniature of the courier, who is kind of like the um, the character you play as in the game. This is how he looks on the front of the box. Mm. Um, but that said, it's um, it's wearing the uniform of an NCR ranger who are sort of like your cowboy lawman kind of guys in the Fallout world. Mm. And yeah, this was a lovely model to paint. I really enjoyed this one because um, we got to explore some textures on here. So his coat has got a slight roughness to it that we build yeah. into the techniques to paint it. So it looks weather-worn. Same with his jeans, got a slight sort of weathered tone on there, yeah. which is really fun to make it fit that universe. Yeah, I did I did like that, that the jeans part of it, it really captures the, the realism mm. on it. So... Yeah, it's. Um, I don't know a lot about the game though, to be honest. I, I, the well, I was going to say you've got you've got the helmet color and everything to the T there. That is that is pretty much the, uh, the front <laughs> cover of the game. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's um it's U.S. Army. It's from Vallejo. It's U.S. Olive Drab. So it's, mm. it, the good thing about Fallout is because it's got all these U.S. military things in. You just take in the World War Two colors because they're perfect for it. Yeah. Um, but I, I I love Fallout. I've um so I've not actually played this game. Right. Um, 
because I, I've not found anyone else yet around me playing it. <laughs> but I have collected my own Brotherhood of Steel Force, you know, with all power armor and stuff. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, the models are lovely. They're really nice to paint. And I get lots of nostalgia out of them because I'm a guy who played Fallout 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never played New Vegas. It's the only one I've never played. Um, but it is set in the same area as Fallout 1 and 2. So I do recognize the locations and the factions. So it's mm-hmm. uh, something I really like. Yeah. Oh, well, they, uh, that's um, a, a nice yellow there, Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> yellow is not difficult to paint. Uh, no, but it's still impressive. It's still impressive. Like... Um, I mean, you know, following along on your tutorial for this one does make it a lot easier, and it goes to show that it's not as difficult as it's made out to be, or it u- even used to be, to do maybe. Um, but I still find it impressive when you see a nice, clean, yellow, crisp, you know. Um, oh, that's why people like to paint this kind of thing. It's, um, it's still a mark of skill to paint a yellow army, and it's it always turns heads when someone turns up with their, like, iron and army you know but on the table everyone's like oh, that, that, create that mad lad he's got yellow <laughs> we're not worthy <laughs> i know uh, but yeah. painting yellow is is uh, nowadays it used to be much more difficult but nowadays you've got the tools available to be able to make it much more approachable the hardest part about painting an army in yellow or white is if you make a mistake and trying to fix it up so when we do videos with a model like this we like to do a you know like what happens if you get a black splodge on the arm well this is what you do and you know repair it so mm-hmm. uh, this will have had somewhere i can't remember where it was we did it but there's somewhere on it where a mistake was made on purpose to show what to do to fix yeah, it up yeah that's uh it is Good. nice it is nice <laughs> I, no- I noticed you do quite a lot of yellow actually there's a oh, few people ask for it. yeah 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 um, um people like to it, i mean a large part of what made us successful is uh, doing these things absolutely as being difficult and breaking them down so yeah. yellow is definitely one of those things so it's always nice to do that yeah um and say talking about sort of things like getting uh, the, the most out of textures and things. I think this model demonstrates mm. it quite well. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, loads of different textures going on. Um, I love the fact how you like put like the uh, the markings for where there would be text, mm-hmm. which is yes, which is great. That's um, that's just fine control of just uh, basically squiggling your hand mm-hmm. along, mm-hmm. or bracing yeah. it, sort of allowing it to shake a little bit, so you get that kind of sort of faint bit of text on there these are a lot of fun to paint is that model yeah the most fun part about this kind of thing is doing the skin because once you paint the tone on it it's very easy to then go mm. in with some washers and create like bruises and things like that so it, yeah nurgle's always fun yeah. to paint yeah i will point out as well i believe all the images that i'm showing now if anyone's interested in how to paint any of these not you know i think that even if you haven't got that model in particular there's always something from these videos that you can take and use on other miniatures anyway so mm. it's always worth going and checking out these tutorials whether that's on you know youtube or over at the uh, the website so um i myself am a member anyway i think ash you're you, a member? i'm still a member from the last time he sold it to me <laughs> <laughs> so, oh thank you for being able to uh, allow me to feed myself <laughs> yeah so um are yeah. you enjoying those coffees i'm buying yeah everyone. <laughs> No, no, I've, everything on there is, but I've, I've glimpsed into it a few times, and there, yeah, Daz is correct, there's always something in every video you can use on your models, and I feel that my game's stepped up a little bit more since I've been watching different tutorials like Duncan, so yeah. oh. it's, always worth, it's I, worth a I, look. I, I'm it's glad worth it. Plus, plus, it's only about the equivalent of, what, a cup of coffee a month? Mm. So, yeah, we... Um, we purposely priced it as low as we could to by by our maths of how many people we thought would sign up to make ourselves able to survive. Yeah, <laughs> so, so I, th- yeah. I think you get definitely get your money's worth. There's no. Oh, there's you, no you question. get your money. <laughs> yeah, there's no question. Yeah. <laughs> like, Don't increase the price though, because. <laughs> 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 ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so there is actually quite a good question um, mm. in the chat. Uh, from Grumpy Ghosts, who's who's asked like, when and how do you consider a mini finished for for you to put out as content? Um, for the painting video, it's what I would consider to be sort of high tabletop is kind of where we go up to, mm-hmm. and the intent being that there's a point where we go. Um, you can stop here if you want to, and it looks great. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you want to do the highlights, we're going to start with the important ones, and that's what it'll always be. So if you just want to highlight a little bit, like the, the key thing, we'll start with that. Everything after that we sort of consider to be optional, so it depends how much time you want to put into it. Um, but normally, my point will be the main colours will have 
two highlights on them and everything else on it will have one and i'll tend to stop there um, unless we're specifically pitching out something more advanced in which case we'll put more into it um or if we're doing like this is how you speed paint something that's when we reel it right back mm -hmm. so yeah um for my own miniatures i don't ever really consider anything finished um because uh well i mean for example i've got a thing i can show you here um oh shall i go uh, back to uh Oh, no, it's uh, a miniature I can show you right here. So I'll, I'll a project I've been that. doing with some yeah. friends recently. I don't know if you guys can see this very clearly on the camera. This is a Panzer IV tank I've been painting for my Africa Corps army. Mm. I've got some mates who I've been playing Flames of War with. And um, these tanks don't have anywhere near enough stowage on as far as I'm concerned. But I didn't have any <laughs> at the time. So <laughs> at some point, I'm going to go back, glue some on and paint that. So, you know, they're finished. They look finished on the table. But never mm. say never. Yeah. I always go and change something. And then, uh, I, I, uh, Oh, sorry, Lewis. Carry on. That's right. No, I, I appreciate where you're coming from when it comes to DAC. So I, I get where you're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I only did them because um, so I some mate well, during lockdown. You know, everyone sort of like was uh, it, it was weird. It was difficult, wasn't it, going through all this sort of stuff? And I remember losing my mojo for my painting because I was just sort of like I was painting all this stuff and it just goes in a box and I didn't do anything with it. Uh, that's my own stuff, by the way, not like the academy stuff. Mm. And um, so mates and I, we were all going through the same sort of feeling. So we were like, well, why don't we just do something new that we've not done before that we can all look forward to playing together, you know, learning the rules together when we meet up. Mm. And one of the guys suggests playing to war. And I'm like, sure, I've never really been into World War Two, but yeah, why not? And um, he, like a bolt of lightning, goes for Italians in the desert. And all right, like, I guess that means we're all doing <laughs> yes. mid war. And then the other guy's like, I want to do British. So I was like... I suppose that leaves me with the Germans then, because they wanted to do early war in the desert. So, all right, I'll do the Africa Corps. So, <laughs> so yeah. But anyway, it's been lots of fun. I've been really enjoying it. Yeah. And uh, the Nevermore said uh, the fixing of mistakes and highlighting difficult parts on a mini are some of uh, his favourite things <laughs> about your videos, Duncan. Oh, that's great. So, I'm, um... I'm I'm glad you picked up on that Nevermore. Um, that's uh, that's always been something that. Um, both Roger and I have been very committed to that. We want to be very real about what can happen when you're painting models. And um, we try and structure our videos to talk about things like that that stand out. Like, mm. um, so this week we did the Eldari Autark. And in that video, we start it right out by going, um, right, first thing we're going to do is actually the inside of his cloak, or at least get the base coat on there. Because if we don't do it now, it's going to be really difficult later on and to do it without messing anything up. So, um, you know, we get to kind of, talk about things in a very real and honest way so uh yeah so yeah i'm glad i'm glad you like that it's uh, something that we want to stick to as much as we can yeah um yeah so on the screen now you can see more yellow that we are just showing mm -hmm. just showing off <laughs> yeah now you mention it <laughs> do you know what this was this was quite a funny thing so i wasn't particularly happy with the yellow because it's um so the the ip for this is for bad moons mm. that yellow has got to be as lurid as possible because mm. they're, they want you to look at all their gear right because trying to show off um and it looks weird compared to everything else, and it's much more muted colours, because all you see is the yellow, and it almost looks out of place, until we put the thin down, um, I think it's scrag brown, it's got those hints of rust on there, and that mm. warms up the yellow immensely, and suddenly makes it look really nice. Yeah. So, I'm like, oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> no, I uh, say, so anything yellow just like, gets my attention straight away. Oh, this, uh... It was really fun to paint him. Um, yeah, I think, though, if I was going to do orcs, I think I'd do... Um, Evil Suns instead. You go red. <gasps> Battle Pug! <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> How could I not include Battle Pug? <laughs> I love this one so, so much. So, so much. Oh, this little guy was Roger's idea because um, he's always wanted a pug and uh, then he got a pug shortly afterwards. The thing that bugs me about this photo is that there's a piece of static grass stuck just beneath his tail. Can you see that? You've ruined it for me now. <laughs> Quick, someone Photoshop it. <laughs> uh, right afterwards, I told Roger, and he was like, Argh! as well. But, oh. Oh, uh, it's yeah, we quite literally that. just a single one as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Look at that. It's a single one. Yeah. <laughs> Never so all in it's all in your imagination. It's not there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I enjoyed watching the uh, the painting video for this one, because um, how you get like the the eyes, like the shiny eyes, and mm -hmm. and the tongue is is really cool. Mm -hmm. It's really simple, but uh, it's uh, yeah, it's not it's not too difficult really. Yeah. It's it, it's, um, it's just having the for the eyes in particular. It's just being steady. Mm. Um, I wish you had brighter brown eyes because we we actually based them off Roger's dog. You know when we've actually painted him, mm. so he had to have brown eyes like that. But I, part of me wishes like he had sort of 
I don't know, green or blue or something like that, so you could see the different layers a little bit easier. But... Yeah, yeah. But um, no, that, that's just such a fun model. <laughs> <laughs> it's really silly, isn't it? Yeah. We, <laughs> it was really cool going through the process of it being developed because we we had a guy we know do concept art for our, these ideas of characters that we had, uh, and um, then it got given to the sculptor and he was doing the adjustments and changing things and making it. I remember the first time seeing the 3D render of it, I just burst out laughing because it just looks so silly. Yeah, <laughs> great big lovable dog with a big tongue. I do want I do want one of these. <laughs> Uh, um, once uh, this should be something like like with the paint you know once all the kickstarter backers are out we want to make these miniatures available oh so. yeah that'd be amazing i'd definitely get one <laughs> and uh here's one for the warhammer girl rach i don't know if she's watching Ooh. but she'll watch back but um that that's uh some stunning work there this thing was a nightmare <laughs> <laughs> Before the tutorial starts for it, this was a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> we'll start yeah. off with it. Oh, that's, the, that's the honest truth of the thing. It's um, so we want, we did it the week after it came out, so it arrived. Um, I, I had to pick it up on Sunday morning or something. For whatever reason, I couldn't start it on the Saturday, and so I had to build it on the Sunday. And this thing takes hours to put together. Hmm. So I was just like going for it, and. Um, it, it was complicated. Like there was all sorts of odd things on there that were just really difficult to, to work out and get fit right. Um, and on the fly, I was working out the sub assemblies that I wanted to do and things. And we start filming it. Filming goes fine. Um, but when you get to the part of painting the whites to get the bright green, and I mean, it's not impossible, but it takes a long time. And the clock is ticking at that point, you know, because we've only got three days to shoot the whole video. So mm. I'm going for it. And uh, that's when you feel the pressure and. Uh, yeah, can't afford to make mistakes when that sort of thing's going on. Yeah, but I am happy with how it came out, especially that sort of metallic-y, shimmery cloak. That was something that I did quite a practice on random bits beforehand. Yeah, uh, and I was very happy with the green on the sort of trapped katan at the back of it as well. Mm. Um, again, just very like eye-catching and like yes. yeah, it's um, I I don't know if I would be brave enough. <laughs> To, to paint this, <laughs> <laughs> you have to allocate a lot of time for it. But yeah. it, it is a the, the this new style of Necrons that they've you know sort of reimagined them with. They've got a really really cool theme going on with mm. it. I, I do love the opulence of it, and so like I like his the funny crown he's got on top of his head and everything, and how he's just mm. massive. Yeah, um, yeah it's uh, it's really fun, really fun to do. Um, yeah. I hope it's devastating in the game because of the amount of time it takes to paint it. It should be. I've, I've heard I've heard things. Ash, yeah, Ash, yeah, he, you know. Yeah, he uh, he hurts, <laughs> and he's hard to kill as well. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And he can heroically intervene, which is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Pushes people it's out the way old... with this big throne. It's a big throne. How can you? Hurt... <laughs> but yes, he, he he yeah. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. On to ah. uh, Lewis. What's this? Uh, looking at the symbol, <laughs> I'm going to say uh, paratrooper. Uh, definitely bolt action, and it's, I'm going <laughs> to say it's paratrooper. If I'm wrong, I'm going to have to eat a hat. You are right. It's the uh, American. Is it the 101st? I think the eagle symbol, if I remember correctly. Yeah, um, 101st. Uh, yeah, so this is the dude from Band of Brothers. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and this is uh, it's what we painted quite a while ago, actually. And uh, I remember going through. So for World War Two stuff, people are real sticklers for the uniforms, right? And so. Yep. I, uh, yes, they are. I'm I'm much more blasé about things, so I quite enjoy in videos and they go on YouTube that someone inevitably comes along to tell me I've got some historical facts wrong. And yeah, I did so, use that green or something like that. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm inclined to like put something in there that's mm. wrong on purpose sometimes just to mess with people. But anyway, um, <laughs> but this guy, um, they get him in the uh, the Band of Brothers set that Warlord Games do. But in that set, they present them as they are in D-Day. But this uniform is actually the one that's after. So in yeah. D-Day, they have a more sort of like a khaki kind of uniform. And then immediately afterwards, into Normandy, they're given this green one instead. So this is a guy from right towards the end of World War Two. Um, but I also enjoy the challenge of doing these kind of things because mm. their um, uh, World War Two is not something I know massive amounts about. I've been learning more about it recently, um, but when I get the uniform for a thing, I then have to go on research trips mm. to work out what it's all supposed to be. And um, yeah, it can be quite an interesting thing to start to work out all the nuances of it. Because I'm much more familiar with Napoleonic stuff when it comes to that. But mm. you know, to, to when you first glance at World War Two, it's like everything's green and drab. Then you start going into it and you start finding the little sort of flashes of national um, 
like pride that they put into the various different bits and pieces. So, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Again, not something I know a lot about this sort of um, this game system. So this is more like Lewis. You're into a lot more of the uh, the other game systems, aren't you? Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'd, I'd say at the moment I'm tending towards more historical based games. So yeah. I completely get where Duncan's coming from because like <laughs> when it comes to like allies forces it's it you can get away with a lot of things mm-hmm. as soon as you hit germans mm-hmm. i think you'll no. find that's not dunkel gelb <laughs> yes oh, well, no, hang on <laughs> these these paratroopers didn't have p dot this year oh yes really? yeah like, no oh. cares. <laughs> nobody cares it doesn't matter like does it look cool there you go it's, yeah exactly uh, exactly yeah. that's the way i go. that's why i chose to play japanese to begin with because it's all the same color yeah, all the way through. Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't know. I think um, a frequent thing we come to in the historical painting videos is people get very hung up on making sure everything's perfect, and um, it can put people off. So uh, I, I find it important to say, now, honestly, you don't have to get the green exactly right, because the fact is, it's going to be made in different factories, so we're going to use different quantities of dye, and then when it sees action, it's going to be going through all sorts of conditions, and like the sun's going to bleach it, for example. So as long as it's something roughly like at a glance and roughly correct, then that's mm. fine. That's... Yeah, I, I completely agree with you on that one. I, but I, I have I have come across many examples, especially when playing in Dawn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's not the right colour green. I was like, come on. Yeah, and it's like, you're, why are you playing Bolt Action? It's basically 40k World War Two, And yeah. it's really fun and accessible, but if you want to be a real stickler about it, there's more detailed World War Two games that you can play. Hmm. So, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like to play the movie of the period, personally. But, yeah, oh. And everyone's different. I'm not saying I'm right or anything, but... Uh, I am like <laughs> <laughs> oh, completely with you. But, um, yeah, I think this is the uh, the last image I've got, just because it was awesome. <laughs> uh, the flower of chivalry. <laughs> yeah. um, so, loose bold for bold. <laughs> yes. Um, h- how many um, of these, like... Do you have like Bretonian Knights? Yeah, quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, um, I <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've actually I've painted um, three Bretonian armies mm. uh, in the last, I suppose, what fifteen years, I guess. So I painted one when I worked in games which are retail. Um, I then painted another one when I was in the studio, which turned up in White Dwarf, and I played it in a great big campaign. You know, the, mm-hmm. the Blood and the Badlands campaign. Yeah. Um, and then when Age of Sigma was being developed, it was all kind of very unknown as to what exactly was going to be in it and not. Um, so for play testing, um, I painted some new Bretonians to do something new and put them around bases and open up the poses a little bit more. Mm. Um, it was after I'd done a lot of this that I realized they weren't actually in the new law. Um, but there was a chance that they were going to be in Azaheim or whatever at that point. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I painted a whole, I think it's about a thousand points worth once right. the point types came out. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I used them in play testing when people sampled the rules. By the way, I didn't know about the weird silly rules at that point. This didn't appear until the day the rules went up. Like, you mean if I have a Grail, I get bonuses? I had no idea. It didn't fun in play testing <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think to answer your question, then I have uh, ten knights of the realm like that. I've right. got ten knights errant like that. Um, and then in my old army, I have eight, no, nine knights of the realm. Six knights errant, eight questing knights, hmm. five grail knights. Uh, I think it's something in the region of 50 knights. <laughs> it's quite a lot. Wow. And though that one on the round base, I've been um, rebasing them on, mm. back onto squares for whenever the old world appears. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I realised that that line. going to be a off. question later. Don't spoil too much here. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> right. I don't know anything. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I realized I had so much stuff because uh, the, the idea is once I finish rebasing all those things, I'm going to start getting out my old miniatures and kind of goes back to that question from earlier. I'm going to be jazzing things up a little bit, you know, some new highlights and things and uh, making them all the bases match. So I, I'll have a massive wall of horses. It's going to be like the Riders of Rohan walking up. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, cur- I'm currently doing that with Night Goblins. So I can. F- yeah. <laughs> Put them onto squares. That, yeah, well, yeah, that's that's what I'm currently doing. And then I realised how many I actually now own, and I'm like, oh my god. I'm not, I'm not jumping, I'm not jumping the gun yet with the squares. I, I'm, uh, I don't, I don't know if my army is going to be represented. So, uh... <laughs> well, I, um, I only did it because a friend of mine got, well, this guy, I, 
I hadn't spoken to him for quite a while, but he got in touch because um, on um, Facebook he posted a picture of a dwarf army that he'd painted for playing Old Hammer. And I find Old Hammer a fascinating, you know, thing in the wargaming community, like just playing old versions because you love them. Um, so I rebased my guys onto squares just to play against him and mm. had a blast. Um, it's weird going back to Fantasy Sixth Edition because mm. I got so used to Eighth. Sixth is very much like folded in, especially with the magic. Mm. Uh, so yeah, but what, what's your army then? What's well, I, uh, well. <laughs> oh no, no! That's a can of worms. Yeah, that's a can, it's a can <laughs> of worms, Duncan. Don't. <laughs> so I got recently four, removed yeah, from Forge World. Recently huh? removed from Forge World. Oh, Chaos Dwarves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's Forge World doing it. So like, yeah. Right, well, if they're, uh, they're not in it, I will be shocked. I say I've got all my Legion of Asgore, and like, it's the it's one of the only armies that I've actually ever like finished, like painting done, and then it's sort of like I bye see. bye. bye. <laughs> like, I oh, see. Oh, I I know, brother. <laughs> 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 oh, here, we, here we go. Look the chat. Look, Chaos uh, got Trek two. It's broken <laughs> fire demons and some dwarves. Yeah, okay, I run 24 Kadai Firebond, but let's not go there. Uh, <laughs> well, you did Suddenly the sympathy's gone. run 24. <laughs> you did. No, you no. used to run it. <laughs> that said, my knights would charge it. Yeah, I'll take on well. anyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, okay, that's, that's enough dear. of Chaos Dwarves now. <laughs> so, with, with staying on the uh, old world stuff, so with, with that coming out maybe soon in the future who knows whenever whether the decider what are you looking forward or what would you like to be included into the old world what what is is there something that you think to yourself if they don't include this naughty uh bretonia I don't... <laughs> but that's all right because war and community have pretty much said as good as they're in there because they showed the map with all the yeah. different dukedom yeah. and yeah. stuff um so i think I hope that they approach it understanding that there's a lot of people who have a strong emotional investment in it. So you've got to have all the armies represented in some way or another that people would have collected over time. So um, I think you've got to have... Um, I'm not sure if the date that it's set at is before or after Skaven make themselves known. But I mean, like, I feel like you've got to have mm. Skaven in there because people love them and mm. people are going to have armies of them and you don't want to be like the one that's left out. So that's so why I think your Chaos Dwarves will be fine. Yeah. Um, especially... Forge World, Forge World make them and Forge World are doing this. Mm. Um, I'm, I wonder how well it's going to be, um, like, what miniatures are going to be available, or uh, what the availability will be like, because mm. it's a massive range of figures, and I don't know if you, like, you could afford to have that much stuff being made alongside everything else. Yeah. So I see. Um, I think I mostly would like to see them approach it with the care and love that Forge World was showing with those um, fantasy books before they stopped doing them. Oh, um, do you remember things like the uh, Tamukan and the Monstrous Arcana? So, I want to see something yeah, like yeah. that. Uh, and they were doing Black Fly Pass. I thought, which is why you had all those um, like the, the mm. Empire models that they were doing and stuff and the Orcs and things. So I'd like to see them delve into all that, all the resources which they no doubt would have made mm. and start to present that in it. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. Um, so it feels real, and it feels like real love and passion's gone into it. Same with the Horus Heresy. Um, so that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Yeah. But looking at so far, the fact that they've gone is in set in this time frame where things are different, and they're making allusions to historical things in the Warhammer story. Mm. I think they know what they're doing. And if Warhammer Total War is anything to go by, I think they'll, you know, have a lot of depth in it. Yeah, I was gonna say they might release the armies like a bit like Total War Warhammer is they they'll start with a base set and then go we're gonna add this one this one this one this one and yeah. so. I'm so to speculate I think um, that it'll be like when they took on Lord of the Rings um, I think mm. they'll lean on existing miniatures quite heavily and add a, like in a core box set it'll be two armies and they'll be quite minimal like brand new models so. I don't know, if you had Empire vs. Orcs, I imagine it's going to be plastics from 8th edition with a new general for either side. That's mm. what, I'd, what I would expect from it. Um, mm. We shall see. Um, to make it different from Age of Sigmar, quite clearly, I would suspect as well it'll be factions that aren't in Age of Sigmar. Mm. Um, so, mm -hmm. who knows, you might, you might have Kislev versus Chaos Warriors or something. But then they're in Slave to Darkness are in Age of Sigmar, aren't they? Um, they are. Uh, those. Um, yeah. 
So Unless we'll you see. bring in the Tomb Kingdoms. <laughs> Poor Tomb well, Kingdoms. Well, oh, Tomb Kingdoms. Yeah. I, I, maybe I, maybe I, I, Bretonians on crusade against the Tomb Kings. The things you say yeah. there. Yeah, oh, I'd no, love to you, see you that. Say, yeah. You yes. say that, but I have said that. I said if you want to like break the internet or when pre-orders go up, do Bretonians versus Tomb Kings box set. Yeah. And just watch it implode <laughs> just because it will. Yeah. Mess up um, all the people who are yeah. selling for crazy prices yeah. on eBay. I um, <laughs> I just I just hope that we, they do like a character series. Like like, really like cool. with the Primarchs, but like I'd love to have nice pose dynamic models that bring these epic characters to life, you know. Yeah, that'd I, be really cool. Yeah. Like a, a regal Carl Franz or something like that, or mm -hmm. yeah. I want there's only one that I really, really would love, and that's um Zachariah the Ever Living. Oh yeah. Yes. I'd love <laughs> a nice nice uh, model, model cool. of that one. But yeah. Well I think I I I've got absolutely no idea when it will come out. Um, I, my gut tells me it's not going to be any time soon because no. well, I, I left basically the day they announced it. And I know that when they start these initial things for it, um, it's always a long, long way out. And this was highly unusual. And I think it's because they were employing people, so they, they wanted to control the announcement of it. Um, so I don't know. I, my gut would tell me I don't expect anything this year, but you know, I've been wrong about many of things, so who knows? Yeah, um, yeah uh, but the... the when um, they were starting it up, I was aware that the people involved in it love Warhammer, mm. and there's like, God, whenever a new job comes up from it, all the people who apply for it are people who love Warhammer fantasy yeah. and want to be on Warhammer, you know. So I, I, I've got high hopes for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know that a lot of people, um, you know, it's from your time working uh, for Games Workshop anyway, in Warhammer community, doing all the videos and things, um, that sort of like see you as, as like an inspiration to, for what they do in, in their painting and things like that your name comes up a lot duncan it's mm. <laughs> very strange but the, uh, <laughs> the, the the question that i've got is who inspires you in your hobby um Ooh. it was uh it was always chris peach really uh, hmm. yeah because yeah, yeah. yeah. uh, i used to i worked with him through most of my time at games workshop yeah. and uh, like it retail back when i joined it i was a part-timer and he was a full-timer and then when the manager moved on he took the management position and i took his full-time position so mm -hmm. you know um, and then in the studio i was always working alongside him and chris has an incredible imagination for just coming out with great ideas and you'll see it all the time you follow him on instagram you'll see these just these things he comes out with that you wouldn't expect looking at the various miniatures that you know yeah. he's made them out of. um and i always found that really uh, th the way he played it as well with the um the narrative and the fun in things mm -hmm. um so I always remember the first army he um, played against me with was his own Imperial Guard army, where he'd put he'd mod. It was all Cadians, but he'd green stuff berets on them, and he'd play them like the British yes. Airborne, which is too far. And, That's cool. Yeah, it was always so much fun to see that happening. Yeah. I remember he had a remember the Kazakin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He had the sergeant for that, and he um, I'd not seen anyone do it to that point, but he painted like five o'clock shadow on him and shaved hair and stuff. And this guy the. <laughs> maybe it's the cripple of the, the metal sculpt he looked like he was sort of like you know and so we just started calling him nails guy and we're like oh it's nails guy oh no <laughs> and he just developed his reputation just because of how he paints it so i always find that really um like yeah. incredible yeah how it's it led on into his gaming i might so, yeah. i might be wrong here but was it was it chris's army that had um a pair of smoking boots yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> well, they've just been like a vaf yeah. yeah, just just disintegrated. Like, yeah, yeah. Just some but... Guardsman boots that have got smoke coming out. Of. That's exactly it. The yeah. guy has been nailed by the heavy bolter. Yep, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you, people yeah. could find like a picture of it if you scroll through like his Twitter or something like that. You had to find oh, yeah. it, but um... definitely worth following his Instagram just to see these mm -hmm. like amazing ideas he comes out with. Yeah, um, and. I you know, with the community growing um, all the time, you know, um, it's uh, it's been amazing, like, for us, like, being on Instagram a lot now as well. Like, you just see the community growing and growing and growing. And um, I just wondering what sort of tips or what top tip would you give um, someone new coming into the hobby? Um, um, firstly, I would say uh, don't be intimidated by things that you see mm -hmm. um, because there's loads of incredible painters out there and it's always... Um, easy to look at these things and go i'll never do that but the fact is you can if you put enough work into it um and you want to learn and you, you 
especially pay attention to what people do like watch it's not about the colors that they're using hmm. it's the way they're using it um yeah. so like that's the thing to focus on look at how they're holding the miniature how they hold their hands um uh, just like what they're doing with the brush you know how they get the paint ready and things so that's what i'd recommend uh, there's also a massive amount of resources available nowadays that just weren't there when i was younger um so if you want to learn different things, there's lots of things out there. Um, so, yes, enjoy yourself. Uh, when it comes to selecting your army and building your troops as well, it's very easy to fall into the trap of, um, like, what's the meta say and net listing and stuff. Um, ultimately, it doesn't matter. You should always put together the things that you like and on the way that you like, and you'll be fine when you're playing a game. If you ever do play a game where you get smashed, don't worry about it. It happens to everybody. Yeah. But there will be lots more fun games than that. So, you know, those are, I suppose, the key things. Um if you can go to a local store and get into a gaming group as well, you'll have loads of fun because it becomes a, uh, like me with that Flames of War thing, um, it's exciting because you're all doing something like new for the next time you play and you get to sort of build this story together. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, look for something like that if you can get into one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I suppose, um, again, I, you know, I've said it before, but if uh, anyone that watches any of your videos and that um, will... Uh get a good sense of um how simplified things could be you know because things yeah. are daunting and things like that. it's like um you know some some minis aren't aren't simple like you know your um uh what, what was it again the silent king oh yeah by any means <laughs> yes. but but i'm sure it's a lot less daunting after watching your video to somebody yeah you know well, it, 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 it's not going to take away from the fact that it's a large miniature it's very detailed and it's going to take a lot of time practice things like that but it goes from yeah. a oh my god moment i can't do this to i just slowly watch your video it's all explained mm. and yeah hopefully. yeah well yeah. it's not a, a thing like that it's still the same techniques you use to paint that big mon the the you know the silent king as it is to paint the necron warrior there's just more of them and mm. you know there's, there's just more stage and it takes longer so a lot of it is just having the willpower to see it all the way through yeah um uh, painting isn't particularly difficult once you've got mastered a, a certain set of basic techniques and mm -hmm. everything kind of builds on top of that even when you go up to more advanced painting i mean last week we put out a video it's on the academy and our youtube channel where it's about painting faces mm -hmm. and we do three so one's like very simple and quick then there's sort of like an intermediate yeah. which is the normal sort of the tabletop standard that i normally do and then there's one that's more advanced and if you look at it the the techniques are not vastly different of how it goes across it it's just that as you get to the intermediate and the higher one there's more control focused on it and even the higher end one it's not that it's actually more difficult to do it's just that it takes longer because it, there's more um, you, you can't rely on washers because you shade yourself so yeah. you have more control mm. but it just means that rather than taking like five minutes it takes 50 minutes but mm. you know yeah if you yeah if you can do the intermediate one you can probably do the advanced one yeah so yeah so yeah. don't be intimidated by these sort of things you can learn if you know yeah. you, you want to Hmm. Yeah. Um, so, Ashton, Ashton Lewis, are you, have you got anything else you wanted to uh, ask? Or have, have I you... have. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it, Lewis. Just... Yeah. Because obviously, I've I've seen that you've got quite a few like cool videos on the Napoleonics. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> which, is, which is great for me because I'm currently going through Napoleonic painting myself. Oh, you madman! <laughs> yeah, I am. Really am. Um, well, I think. Like from from you, are you excited from like the Warlord's new epic size mm. stuff, or do you think you look at that and you go, "Oh, what's a?" <laughs> um, I think it's a great idea. Um, it's uh, something that I'm kind of shocked hasn't happened sooner, uh, because when it comes to historical gaming, it's not like um, Warhammer where everything's kind of set and structured for you. It's much more like a Wild West kind of thing, um, possibly with the exception of World War Two, mm. where uh, yeah. it's very easy to transfer from. 40k to playing bolt action so it's world war ii but it's all very familiar with points and organization charts and all this sort of stuff and flames war by extension is kind of the same sort of thing the scale's different but rather than having like a squad of troopers you'll have a squadron of tanks but you know it plays in a very sort of familiar way when it comes to other yeah. periods there aren't many things like that so if you're doing napoleonics what you do is first of all decide what scale you want to play then you decide what rule set you want to play uh, then you pick what manufacturer miniatures you decide the ground scales so then you work out the ratio of how many figures represent what and um this is just how people sort of done it and i found it very weird that no one's come along with a warhammer like version of these things for all the popular periods like right i suppose you used to have warhammer ancients but i don't understand why there's not one where it's rome versus carthage like warhammer with all the other states around it it seems 
sort of sensible to me. Mm. Um, so yeah, with Napoleonics, with the with Warlord's um, new epic stuff, I think it's great because if you're in, if you've always been interested in collecting like a British Napoleonic army, but you've been really confused about all these battalions, all the facing colours, all the flags, like what does all this stuff mean? That set you can pick up and it explains to you what it all is, and you have a, a, um, a nice structured set of like even points values and like army list rules and things. Um, so it's easy to get your head around it, and then if you want to explore into these more sort of like nuanced rule sets, you can do. So I think it's great. The the, the sets are great too. I mean, I got the French one. Um, I've not painted any of it yet because I've got things to finish first. But um, <laughs> you get so much stuff in the box, and you get scenery and everything, and you get all the flags. You get the lot, and it's a whole army um, in black powder terms. You've got like um, four brigades worth of troops which gives you lots of options for maneuver on the battlefield and things so it's um, yeah. th- it's a really really good set um, i'm very excited to see how they expand it um yeah they add, I, I, like russia and stuff yeah because i've i've recently like you said like joining a group i recently joined a, a group that started playing a, a game called batil empire oh yeah okay and hmm. uh, yeah that <laughs> that rings a bell i think i've heard of it yeah, it's just recently come out in England in an English version. It's uh, going from like 40k or skirmish games to like this. It's like okay, I need to, I need to leave those thoughts over there for now. <laughs> I need to think differently, so yeah. I completely get where you're coming from. And uh, everyone keeps recommending the epic stuff that Warlord are bringing out as well because it's uh, I think it's going to be an interesting buy, and I think we might see more people enter that side of the hobby. Yeah, I think so. Because when it comes to Napoleonic stuff, everyone always wants to do like, if you're playing as the French, you want to have the Imperial Guard in there. You know, you want to have the the first Grenadiers of the Guard and all this sort of stuff. All these like, you want to have Cuirassier and all these all these sort of famous things that you'll have seen in like episodes of Sharp or whatever. Um, yeah. But um, when you then look at the army list rules, it's like it, essentially there is no army list for most historical things. You simply take what is reasonable for your army so most of the time you'd never have the imperial guard because in real life they'd only be committed to the battlefield when the game when the battle's already won and they're essentially the force that finishes things off which is why they seem invincible um but when you're approaching it from a war gamer's perspective you want to have the cool units and do these things so when looking at the epic napoleonics there's like okay in the french army list i've got the the french army then i've got the imperial guard army list and I can have the Imperial Guard, but I can see that their units are more than twice the cost of the British ones. So the Brits are going to outnumber me two to one. So I've got to protect these things, and I've got to use them carefully, and I've got to sort of balance my force. So mm. it's, it's like Workshop. You know, it's like having an army of Terminators. Mm. You, you're going to have more powerful troops, but there's a price to pay for it. So it lets people play that game that they want to do and then learn about the process afterwards, you know, and learn about the history and then take it wherever they want. So I think it's a great idea, and I think the models look really nice. Mm. Um, I'm wondering which... Uh, which army do you think you'll do? Are you doing Brits or French, or are you waiting for the Prussians? Um, <laughs> well, so I'm currently I'm currently doing a uh, for Patil Empire. I'm currently doing a Spanish force, so I've oh. currently painted myself with painting white. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, but I think the likelihood is I'm probably going to play. I might play Brits, um, just because I don't usually play. I usually play the other side if that makes sense in games. Mm-hmm. So, for example, in bolt action, I normally play Axis or a minor faction that no one ever plays. Mm-hmm. So, I think I might, I might actually just actually play British for a change. Yeah, why not? I think you've earned it. <laughs> yeah, and, and plus, and plus, uh, you know, I've got, uh, I've got a great excuse because I live and work next to the old Napoleonic Army Depot. So, I've, I've, I've got that as reference. So I kind of got to go down that road, really. <laughs> you got the right to do it then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, Sorry, I've taken down the historical route there. I do apologise. Uh, no, oh, no, I, I like historical games. I've been doing historicals for a long, long yeah. time. It, when I was working at Workshop, it was like the thing I'd do um, for my own private hobby that wasn't mm. connected to work, so I could de-stress. Um, mm. And I'd be able to explore new techniques via that. So I've yeah. uh, painted quite a large 28 mil French army um, with Perry miniatures. And yeah. uh, I've, done a, I've got a smaller Russian army, not so many. But um, mm. I'd like to do British, but it's difficult to find the time nowadays. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I've done medieval stuff too. I did loads of it. I did a, an Athenian and a Spartan army. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I've done lots of historicals. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ash, have you. Uh... 
Yeah, there's uh, on. one thing I've always been wondering as well. So you you started at Games Workshop as a as a sort of part timer. Um, from going to that, how did were you picked to do the painting tutorials on their TV show? What what was what was the process of that? What did someone just go, "Oi, you, Rosie, you're uh, in front of the camera now"? By and large, yeah, that's sort of what happened. Um, <laughs> so I, I got a job in the studio um, just because I it was just a job, you know, you just apply for it, just keep an eye on their careers page and jobs pop up. Um, and what I got was a job in the hobby team. They were called they're called the army painters now, um, but their job was to paint the sort of um, the bulk of stuff that you'd see in photographs. So in fantasy terms, for example. Heavy Metal might paint the 10 minutes you see on the front of the box. And when you see the regiment of 20, they've done the front 10. But we do the 10 behind them. Um, but you'd also do articles for White Dwarf with content, you know, like, um, <clears throat> oh, the the uh, Flesh Terrors are out this month. And Duncan's painted a Flesh Terror army. Here's his guide of how he did his miniatures. You too can buy this. Look at the imagination he's put into this sort of thing. You could do that as well. So that was kind of like what I did. Um, when the paint range got refreshed and they did the How to Paint Sitla Miniatures book, they wanted to uh, use the TV studio that had just started then to have a go at making a DVD that came with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they wanted one of us army painters to do that because it was kind of the same guides were done in that book, but presented in a video. And um, I just happened to have more of a free schedule than anyone else at the time. So mm -hmm. I just got assigned to do it. Um, also, I had prettier hands, people jokingly said. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I don't bite my nails. So <laughs> so my fingers didn't look chewed or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, so I did that. And that's where I met Roger. Uh, but I had, I think, uh, so I always loved doing the painting guides because for me in retail, especially the magic was when you had like a, a kid that was quite introverted or something like that and a bit shy. If you got them painting a miniature and you saw them coming out their shell and doing something that were really proud of and then running off to their parents to show them like the um, the highlights that just put on some space marine or whatever, um, I always found that really wholesome and really nice. Yeah. Uh, so when I was doing these guides for White Dwarf, I was very stubborn about, honestly, this is what the thing looks like. If it looks like a mess at stage two, it, it, that's what it should look like so that the person at home sees that they're following it correctly. Mm. Um, so when it came to the TV thing, I stuck to that, and that fit in very well with what Roger wanted to do with his plans for these more, um, like having a presenter doing the video, rather than just a voiceover of someone talking else whilst I paint, someone else was voiceovering it. Um, so he managed to argue his boss to get me to come in on a like, two-day temporary thing to try his idea out, and we filmed a video of building a riptide, which was like a full assembly guide. It's an incredibly boring video. It goes on for like an hour. It's so boring. Mm. Um, but it proved the concept and so then the job went up and Roger came I remember the day after like I'd just gone back to the studio and I'd finished the day I was packing up Roger comes down to the door and he's like they're going to put up a job to do this I think you should, have, should go for it because I think we've got the same idea about it I think we could really make something here and I was like oh god <laughs> like, I was really scared because you know people weren't particularly nice towards workshop at that point because mm. there was no media presence so understandably people thought you didn't want to talk to him and I was like well, if it's only my face on it, people are going to blame me for all of this. And mm. you know, I, I was quite worried about that. But um, so I was on the fence. But I remember cause I used to carpool with some friends. And on the way back, I told them about the job. And they said, you've got to do it because if you don't and it goes really well, you're always going to regret the fact you never tried. And this is a, th a very important life lesson, um, which I would recommend anyone take very seriously. Um, if you have an opportunity to do something, even if you're scared, I recommend you go for it because you don't want to be looking down, looking back a few years later and think to yourself, I wish I'd done that and missed out on the chance. Um, might lead you to some risky things, but if it pays off, you'll be happier. Um, so, yeah, so I tried it and it all worked out. Thank God. <laughs> the, 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 the success of it and the odd fame about it that follows me around, around is something that um, was never intended and I mm. find very bizarre. Hmm. And I mostly try to ignore because it freaks me out a little bit. Um, yeah. But I'm just glad that people enjoy what we do and they learn from it. And, you know, um, yeah, I try and keep my feet on the ground about it. But, yeah, yeah I was going back to your question. Um, sorry, I ramble a bit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, going back to your question, um, I was basically in the right place at the right time. And um, I met Roger and both of us had the same idea about it. And he was really the driving force of getting it going. I was just his presenter. Um and so it's always been the two of us doing this sort of thing. And so it's nice now that it's still the two of us doing this thing because now people can see what party plays and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 But a 12 year old me would have been terrified about all this. Mm. And, uh, you know, 
looking back, it's just like one constant string of being lucky. I think. Mm. <laughs> wow, well, that's uh, yeah. I think I think um, that what you're doing now, though, with the the Duncan Rhodes uh, Painting Academy, is like great. Like it's my go-to now. Like mm. you know, I, I obviously I still watch like the stuff that they're they're, they're putting out like through um, Warhammer and things like that through Games Workshop, but. I prefer the more in-depth videos and I felt that that went from their videos like I used to love the videos that you did with it were like three parters mm, and things like that it was like it was proper yeah. like paint let, let's paint this and then it went more to like tip of the days yes I think and I was a bit like uh like no nah. and then like then when when you left and you started the academy it was like it's back like it's back i've got some proper painting tutorials again um mm -hmm. so yeah i um i rec i do i, re I recommend it all the time like oh, thank <laughs> you uh, thank like, you <laughs> i um yeah i, I you know i it's like I, it's like when i go on about certain brushes and paints that i use like i just ramble on about <laughs> it all the time until people go and like buy them or check it out or subscribe or mm -hmm. it's like <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Well, I, i've I'm glad you like it. For me, the, the magic of it's always been trying to take something that's really scary and make it accessible for people. Yeah. Uh, which it's, uh, you know, that sort of wholesome, happy feeling it gives. It's that sort of thing. I um, So uh, our admin lady, Benice, she um, uh, found a, a thing on Reddit um, of a guy talking about our wet blending video. Mm. And um, he was uh, this poster saying, you know, I've always struggled with wet blending. I joined the website because it was a discussion as to whether it was worth joining up or not. Mm. He's like, yeah, I watched the video on wet blending. I tried it and I did it. And that's like, yes. Yeah. As someone who's been struggling for years to do it, watches the video, can do it. There we go. I've earned my pay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or like me, you find out the hard way how to paint something, struggle for many months, and then find that you've done a video about it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that does suck if you've pissed yourself painting an army, particular oh, way. Oh, no. Napoleonics. I, um, <laughs> so I start a lockdown. My, I mean, I do Napoleonic reenactment because um, <laughs> I'm that much of a nerd and I have a great time with it. Um, so a bunch of the guys in it, they always wanted to have a go at painting the Napoleonic army. And so I worked out a quick guide for them to speed paint French. And I did it with photographs. You know, I did it with contrast paints and mm. things. And um, then I got the, the model I did as the test thing and I added a few highlights to it. And I was like, man, that looks better than the ones I paint in my normal way. And it takes a fraction of the time. And I'm like, oh, but I'm so committed painting them that way now. Mm. I can't go back. I've done 10 line infantry units like that. <laughs> I can't really do it all. So I was yeah. like, oh, damn. <laughs> um, I will ask, actually, a, a very quick question before we sort of uh, wrap wrap up and everything. Um, uh, is that, obviously, with your, uh, your paint range coming out now, um, does that mean that in your videos are you going to be just using your paint range or are you still going to be using a mixture of Citadel and Army Painter and everything like that? Uh, it's still going to be a mix. Mm -hmm. um, we are obviously going to use our paints where we can, yeah, yeah. Um, but we want to make sure that um, people have options. So it'll be like, oh, in this case, I'm going to be using Doom Death Black, mm -hmm. but um, an alternative from Citadel will be a Bad and Black or Matte Black from the Army Painter. Choice is yours. Whatever you pick, you want to yeah, do this. Yeah. Um, and let people make up their own mind. Yeah. Um, I don't want to force people to have to buy our stuff if they want to follow our guides. Um, I don't think that's very nice. Um, no. That's very uh, admirable, actually. That's very oh, thank you. Weirdly, we've had people saying that we should only be using our paints now, but people can't buy them yet, so it just seems... No, so that's, like, that's why we're not yeah, that seems them. like a kicker, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can think, use, um... use these paints. You can't get them, but use them. You can't mm -hmm. get them. <laughs> exactly but yeah I, I think it's important to stick to your principles and our videos are always about trying to you know get people to yeah. be able to take part i don't want to price them out of this sort of stuff so yeah um yeah so we'll see but yeah we'll use them yeah, when it's I, our things you know like Sir Coates, yeah. then yeah we are going to just use our paints for that yeah, I, I think i think the the quality of the content or the product will it'll sell itself you know oh, like, yeah. like i don't think there's going to be any issue there you know um, <laughs> I hope so. Well, I mean, well, when I look forward to you guys trying the paints because oh, they, yeah. they are genuinely really good paints. And we had them at our stand at Salute last year, mm. and people were trying them out for the first time and loved them. Yeah. Um, I saw, I saw the queue. I was at Salute. Uh, oh yeah. <gasps> and I saw the queue, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, everyone had to try them out. People really liked them, so that was yeah. great. Um, 
And uh, for, I feel like I sound like I'm trying to sell them here. I suppose I should. Uh, <laughs> Everybody that's watching, go buy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you want some more paints, they'll be out. Yeah. Uh, free to use them. Yeah. I like them. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> People have been asking for like a, a thing that makes them different. I would say um, they feel smoother than other Oh, well, that's good. Mm. Oh. That's a, I couldn't articulate yeah. it until somebody had a go with them absolute and they said they feel really smooth Look, and they showed me the black and there was no brush marks or anything and I was like that's it that's what I've been trying to articulate all this time that's what's different and it turns out when we were talking to the chemists there is a chemical reason for this there's a thing in it that's like a higher quantity that's in others so that's where the feel there's comes from there's so. your strap line it's smooth mm. there yeah, you go smooth. No, perfect no um <laughs> So, um, yeah, what I'll do is, um, obviously, we're live now on, on Twitch, so this will stay on Twitch for a certain amount of time and then disappear, but uh, an edited version of this will come out on our YouTube channel, like, in a week or so, let's say, um, and I will put links to everything in the description. So, I'll put a link to your YouTube channel, um, Duncan, and your website. Thank you very and much. And once paints are available and things, then I can put links up to all that as well. Um, yes. And when I get my hands on them, we'll do a little uh, video, I, I'm sure, of sort of cracking those out and, and uh, using them yeah. and doing a little little uh, demo of them. Um, awesome. But yes, um, yeah, but thank you very much for coming on again. I say, uh, second time on, so we didn't scare you off the first time. Oh, no, it's always a pleasure. Nice to have a chat. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, you... you you may have been naive to think that we had actually learned how to use the equipment by now. Um, <laughs> no, the sil- I don't know what I'm doing with my computer either. So. Yeah, so still the, it's the same experience. Um, You're trying so- to get the microphone working before we started, everybody. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> We've been trying to get these mics working for two weeks in preparation for this. Um, but um, no, once again, thank you to everyone in in the chat who's you know I know a lot of people have been uh, just watching along and, and loitering there. Um, in the background, lurking, lurking in the background. Um, but thank you. They're taking, they're taking him all in. That's what yeah, it is. They get the Duncan aura in. That's what... Yeah, but thank you very much for doing that. Um, I, I, I suppose, like Duncan said, you know, selling his paints. I suppose, you know, it's all right saying all this, but I suppose I've got to promote ourselves here. Um, yeah, do it. <laughs> so if you haven't already, go and uh, follow Dasmore Wall Gaming on Instagram as uh, Tut Lord of Chaos, which is Ash on Instagram. And Lewis, yours is Kings Miniatures on Instagram? Yeah, I think it's Kings underscore Miniatures. Yeah, you'll, it you'll, is. you'll find you. And yeah. uh, don't forget, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, then Dasma War Gaming on uh, Twitch. <laughs> Lose my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you haven't subscribed on YouTube yet, then please do so. It helps a lot. Uh, once again, all Duncan's links will be in the description. Um, thank you very much and uh, yeah until next time happy hobby everyone have a great weekend bye 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 everybody hi this is Ash from Dasma Wargaming thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it make sure you hit that like button and subscribe while you're at it and why not check out the rest of our content see you next time